Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.
brace yourself. Here comes my group of bad Easter dad jokes. <laughs> How does Easter end? With an R. Oh, yeah. What does the Easter Bunny get for making a basket? Two points like everybody else. What is the Easter Rabbit's favorite jewelry? Fourteen carats. What do you call the Easter Bunny the day after Easter? Exhausted. I saw a sign on a restaurant that said, Hop in for some egg selling pizza made by our peeps. But my favorite was the parishioner leaving church on Easter Sunday, and the pastor was typically standing by the door to greet people and to offer them blessings. And he took this one parishioner and said, wait a minute, you can't go yet. The parishioner said, why not? He goes, well, you need to join the army of the Lord. And he goes, I am a member of the army of the Lord. And the pastor said, well, then why do I only see you at Christmas and at Easter? And the parishioner said, I'm in the secret service. <laughs> We have been through Easter. Another holiday is over, and we all, many of us think the high time of the season of the church is over. We've made it from Advent through Easter. Yes, Pentecost is coming, a lot of other very important things, but if you look at an old-fashioned traditional bulletin, they count how many Sundays it's been since Easter. As I was preparing for today's sermon, I was thinking about the moods we get into after a big holiday or event. The difference of the anticipation of something coming to us and then the reality of afterwards, the cleaning up, the getting back to normal. I have a dear friend who many of you know who was a drama teacher in a local high school. And when they did plays, when they did musicals, he spent all his time from the end of class until he got home in the evening working on this play. And it would get busier and busier, and then would come Tech Week, where it was even more time as they brought in the band, and dealt with the various speakers and all those things. And then finally, it was over. And he didn't know what to do with himself, with the time that he had. And he called that post-musical syndrome. I'll let you figure out the initials on your own. I remember being in my high school cafeteria on the Monday after Thanksgiving, and it looked something like a meeting at the Turkey Sandwich Anonymous Club. It felt like everybody in the room had a turkey sandwich on white bread with mayo. Uh, the day after Thanksgiving is no longer a time being with our family and eating holidays. Black Friday has now become a holiday unto itself. Run, run, find a bargain. You know, run, run, make a profit. Everyone gets in such a good mood in the days before Christmas. We look forward to the food and the family and the fun that's about to engulf us. The special spirit of Christmas Eve. The nativity scene being portrayed by the children. Silent nights sung by candlelight. It just warms the heart to think about it. But then on the 26th, people start thinking about when to take down the decorations, when to put out the tree when they can return the gifts that they loved so much when they got them from a relative the day before, but how they can use that in their gift cards to get something they would really like. When I was a kid, we went on family vacations, as I'm sure you all have, and we'd have a great time. And, but like most people, towards the end, you look forward to getting home, getting back to your normal. But when the house got into sight, my mother would always say the same thing. Ugh laundry. So here we are in the days after Easter. We have finished the ham, and please do not get me started on how we have a large pork product to re celebrate the resurrection of a Jewish fellow, but we do. <laughs> the plastic eggs have been put away, and the peeps have started that aging process, so that sometime around the 4th of July you'll come across them and they'll be kind of like this when you do. We all have our holiday traditions. They vary by holiday by family, but we all have our traditions. We want to put up the lights at just the right time and hopefully a couple of days before our neighbors. We want our traditional menu for our holiday meal. 
We want to gather in the same place and sit in the same seats with the same people. When the special season is concluded, though, we want to get back to normal. We can all recall the deep breath that comes along as you put away the last decoration for whatever season you're celebrating. Now, a new spouse or a new child may join the family. Things may change a little bit. Somebody moves, somebody goes off to school, but we want our traditions. We are comforted by our traditions. We are anchored by our traditions. We pay respect to those who have gone before us, both in households and in the church, but we want to get back to our normal. I don't have to tell anyone here about the new normal the pandemic has brought to every aspect of our life. I would be preaching to the choir, and I'm so excited that today I really do get to preach to the choir because they're back. <laughs> it's all different for Easter, though. After Easter, we're not supposed to get back to normal. It's meant to make a difference in our lives. Luke 23, verses 45 and 46. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The curtain that is referenced in this scripture separated the public part of the temple and the Holy of Holies. Now the Holy of Holies, you could only go in there if you were a priest, one of the Levites, and you had to wear a specific set of gar garments, and you had to do sacrifices in a specific way, at specific times, as outlined by the Old Testament. Now Easter has come, the Lord has risen, and the curtain is torn which means we are now able to approach God ourselves. We don't have to have a priest go between us and the Lord. The Lord will hear our own prayers. The world had changed, and there was no getting back to normal. In our scripture today, we find the disciples in a locked, dark room, and they're basically following a, an action or a, a symbol in their own faith called Shiva, sitting Shiva. It's at least a week-long process in the Orthodox Jewish faith to mourn the dead. It's extensive, it's dark, it changes your whole life to just be about mourning those you've lost. People are supposed to cover their mirrors so as not to pay attention to their appearance. They're only supposed to bathe if they need to bathe and only then in cold water. They're not to use cosmetics or wear any jewelry besides their wedding rings. A mourner could not sit on a couch or a recliner or not even on a regular chair. They only could sit on a special uh, bench, if you will, that was three to five him, which is about nine inches from the floor. So imagine that your seat is about the height of a hymnal off the floor, and that's where you have to be for the whole week. Nothing joyful not even listening to music, and certainly no business. Mourners could not change their outer clothing, and they must wear a garment that they have actually torn and rent, as it, as it goes, to show how upset they were about losing the person they're mourning. Now, and they did that for the entire week of Shiva. In our scripture today, the disciples are sitting Shiva for Jesus. They were scared. They were depressed and felt pretty lost. We hear the words of Thomas, and we all know doubting Thomas. We probably all use the phrase, what a doubting Thomas sometime in the last two or three months. But he says, my Lord and my God. He goes from doubting Thomas to confessing Thomas. He has recognized and defined a new relationship, a new world view a new way of being. And this is the starting point for him and for all of us. Jesus has paid the price for our lives. He has changed who we are and our ability to interact with each other and even our ability to interact with God. So Easter is meant to change us. We're not supposed to get back to our normal. There is resurrection, there is change. 
We are not meant to stay where we are, but to move forward in our relationship with God. You know what Thomas did after this? He brought Christianity to all of India. Okay, one of the most densely populated countries in the world. What will we do? To whom will we bring the new world of our risen Savior by means of our own words and our own actions? Jesus entered through the locked doors, and the disciples learned that they needed to unlock their own doors, the doors of their hearts and the doors of their own thoughts. Accept the peace and courage Christ brings and face the world in a whole new way. I pray that we accept that the Easter holiday is meant to change us. We are not meant to go back to our normal. We are meant to change the world and change it in his name. Amen. Thank you.